You know, I'll tell you what, this is the first time I've seen the lineup of this year's new offerings, and I just kind of got a little chuckle to myself. It's a pretty crazy lineup. All right, so we're at the Medford booth here, Blade Show 2023, and uh, Mr. Medford himself is going to run through some of the new stuff that they have at the show. Greg, what do you got, man? Well, thanks for stopping by. You know, I'll tell you what, this is the first time I've seen the lineup of this year's new offerings, and I just kind of got a little chuckle to myself. It's a pretty crazy lineup. So. Uh, I took a redesign of one of my very early knives that I did for one of my marine buddies named JP and uh, kind of modernized it. A uh, really cool, heavy use, like, I would say this is 100 days in the wilderness alone kind of knife. All right. So smash, chop, pry, lash up for spears, start fire, super, super tough knife. You could do a lot of uh, improvisational stuff in the field with it if you're creative. It's got some forward lanyard uh, positions for... Some what, lashing points right up there in the guard. Yeah, stuff, right. you, stuff you may, you know, for if you want to use the knife as a pulling implement or whatever, you know, all kinds of improvisational things. And then uh, this is obviously not serrations. These are forward lashing notches for tying, getting a spear further choked up on here. Okay. You know, instead of having three inches to attach a big knife, it gives you six inches to attach a big knife, right? So, super cool knife, uh, CPM 3V, unfinished, so you could use it on a ferro rod really nicely. And then comes in a beautiful handmade uh, uh, leather sheet done up in Idaho. So, just a really complete, old-fashioned, badass fixed blade. Where would you recommend, if you're going to use a ferro rod, where would you recommend striking it? Top all along the back edge here. Back anywhere, edge. Yeah. Okay. I, so it's got I, a good enough. Yep. Yeah, I left the edges pretty raw on this, which is not my style. I like stuff softer, but yeah, yeah. I left it that way for those guys. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And then the other thing you find out, this is the, the handle on this has got like a, for people who aren't into milling, they wouldn't know this, but when you mill a surface mill like this, the, the smaller your step is, the smoother your finish mm -hmm. as you do tool passes. It's got like a 1,000 step. So this is. Just this really smooth ergonomic yeah. handle. So it's not relying on texture, it's relying on ergonomics to stay in your hand, uh, but less wear, hot spots, you know, from heavy use. You start, a lot of knives you get them and you start hacking and you go, oh, that's gonna, yeah, that, yeah. I'm gonna get a mark right there, or I'm gonna get a blister. This thing is really, grab onto it, feel it yeah. in your hand. For... Yeah, I'm not gonna have to wear band aids tomorrow if I'm using this all day. No, all right. No. Even on the metal, even the, the metal to the scale. Blending really right nice there. transition, yeah. Okay, cool. And then a lot of knives aren't really doing great uh, protection to stay off the blade, but these survival knives, you know, if you're cold, if you're tired, if you haven't slept well, these are where you're most likely to screw Wearing up. gloves, all kinds of, yeah. So to have a, a really nice hilt that keeps your hands accidentally off the blade while you're doing heavy use out in the field, maybe maybe a four hour hike away from medical help, it's a good idea to have a safe. So sure. if weight's not an issue, fantastic you know, survival knife. We've got our, our bushy, which is our other field knife. We came so what up do you with. call it? The bushy. The bushy? Yeah. All right. It's a little bushcrafter knife. So and again, a really nice handmade American sheath. Uh, it's really meant for low carry and kind of keeping a hilt from catching on stuff. If you're maybe you're uh, doing some uh, bow hunting and you're kind of bushwhacking low, laying low, less likely to catch on things. Uh, very, very lightweight if ounces, you know, ounces become pounds when you're going long distances. Sure. So, a uh, really great fixed blade. Uh, not as heavy use oriented as that, not as much like a straight up survival knife, but more of like a good field craft knife. Right. Again, it's got the same lovely. Uh, so, you took the same care on the handle with the what would you say? It was a 1,000 step over on that? Yeah. So, basically unnoticeable but with the contour and then you left that unfinished on the back edge as well yeah okay you could even scrape it in there if you need to could it. yeah and then it's got a little prominent tang so you can do some banging around with it without tearing up the handles sure i like how you have hollow points here so if you still need to lash it yep. you've got areas for your wrist lane or whatever it's not a solid screw and the hardware uh, that's unique to us those are uh custom titanium pieces that we've turned 
Okay. So every single one of those is titanium. We use them across company wide on almost every Sure. Uh, the next thing we did is a forward flipper, which uh, you know I haven't done before necessarily. I drew it up. The kids got to making. I'd say the kids. The crap in my shop. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're what, all 37? so much younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they're all so much younger now. But they go make the knife. The talent is so great in the shop. They come out and like, hey, what do you think, boss? And I feel it. And as I go to open it, like the first time. You know, a lot of guys thumb flip these things. I yeah. don't as much, but uh, it works so nicely. I just love it. So you just keep contact on it the whole time, right in the lockup. I just kind of drag my thumb around, and yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll last forever. And it's just got great classic lines to it. It's got like these kind of guide your finger into the right spot to engage the uh, thumb flipper, the grooves uh, on the presentation. On okay. Yeah, yeah, they kind of get you right there. Okay. So just i think it's simple and sexy and a lot of ford flippers i don't think they have cool blades they don't look very manly it's just a manly looking little straightforward knife uh, all titanium titanium back straps there's some cool dressing options yeah, for yeah. if you want to make it sexy i have so many guys sending pictures of like these praetorian quarter inch thick blades that they're at a steakhouse cutting their steak with you know so we're like, well, let's make a steak knife. And this is where this knife came from. So this is called the T-Bone. Um, it's a little flipper. It's got, people say, oh, it's a pretty narrow knife. You know, it's kind of, it's, well, it's a steak knife. That's what it's for. So again, titanium backstrap with some texture, all titanium construction, G10 insert. I'm doing some really cool, unique runs of these with special inserts. Different insert options. Yeah, I've got some World War One. Uh, wood that's particular to some firearms that we're going to do some integrated packages okay. with and then I'm going to start doing some serrations on limited runs of these on where the you know where you hit the plate on a steak knife yeah yeah and then uh the logo's got a little top hat on it so this is like you're kind of going, super classy going out uh, to yeah. dinner right so I just thought it was kind of fun and it's got a, some subtle little things about it and it you can carry it as an everyday pocket knife too so uh got a great weight and feel to it yeah, that's cool. You're not gonna scare people if you pull this out of your pocket to eat your steak. That's it's really it's. We like, were at Fogo de Chao last night, and most of us had to pull our own knives out because those yeah those knives are not cutting it. Super gentlemanly knife, and if you had that out, people don't feel like you've pulled out like some fucking big tactical thing, you know. And then you said you're you're gonna offer different options. Are those gonna be like in limited runs for the inserts? Or? We're gonna do it a lot of different ways. So we're okay. gonna offer some standard colors, uh, and then. We're going to start doing some exotic okay. stuff. Okay, cool. So, you know, first thing, when you start doing inserts like that, we haven't typically done that in the past. First is like, hey, let's get our process down, then we'll start playing with material. Sure. So we'll and be doing... Pivot there? Say again? Do you machine that part as well? Yeah, these are all titanium, uh, you know, pivots and stuff that are made just for us. I like it. The next thing we did um, is this Bali song. So I had a, a young man working for me named Forrest. And uh, he's designed some uh, Bali songs. He had one, I really liked it. He wanted us to make some stuff for him. And I said, hey, I'll trade you, dis I'll give you a di discount on some manufacturing, do a design for us. He made this for, uh, he kind of did this design for us and then we, we make this on our own. And we actually make his uh, knives now as well. Oh, all right, fair um, trade. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, a very, very sexy ball of songs. It's got nice resonance and great feel to it and good balance. What do you think makes for nice resonance on a ball of song? You know... Because um, that is a thing. Well, it's the sound and vibration <laughs> yeah, yeah. feel, and I think what makes it is really good mating at the joints and uh -huh. the right distance where it engages something solid instead of hollow on the on the Zen pins. Yeah, yeah. So you don't hear that hollow, tingy kind of, yeah. more of a solid. Yeah, it, 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 it just, uh, no, look, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm honestly, I don't like quite get the finesse because it, it's not really my thing, but I want to make something really cool for those guys because at some point they'll uh, grow up and want some. And then you uh, got the lasering on the inside of the handle there. Yeah. Serial number. That's cool. Yeah, thanks. It feels good. I like the texture on the outside. Good air goes on that. And that is a long time on the mill to make that knife. Oh, yeah. So obviously it's channel construction, so it's a solid piece of titanium channel cut out. A lot of chips. A lot of time. That's great, man. Sorry, what would you say the steel was on that? 
or do uh, we know? This is S45. Okay. So we've got that, we've got the uh, T-bone here, we've got the antic, and then probably the thing that guys have asked the most about, and as the knife laws are opening up in the U.S., is our out the front. So um, I've got a couple of pre-production models here, titanium actuators, uh, titanium uh, uh, pocket clips. They've been milled. We put hexagons on them because there's some hex lock technology that's new on the inside, okay. uh, geometry. Now, if you look inside these, these are not a knockoff of Microtech, which most are. These are not. These are unique on the inside. Also, we've got an integrated carriage on the inside, so when you take this knife apart to clean it, service it, or whatever, shit doesn't go flying everywhere when you open it up. Okay. It's all integrated bolts together. It's you don't really need to cool. do it in a salad bowl with some magnets? Yeah, all it's right. pretty much a, it's a kind of an integrated, it's almost like taking the engine out of a watch. It doesn't all just fall apart. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. This thing is very connected. One piece at a time yeah. and inter interlocked. Yeah, it's interlocked. It's actually hard to take the carriage apart. Huh. So you can open it up. We call it the shuttle. You can open it up, take the shuttle out, and all the springs and retainers all pull right into it. They're all it. captured. Or yeah, it's really cool. That's cool. So uh, for that, you know, these things, they wear over time, and to be able to open them up and clean them is probably valuable, I think, over yeah, time. Yeah, I agree. So we've got a couple different versions. Obviously, we've got a, uh, a dagger and a, on a, a, a spin-off of our Praetorian design, which is one of my, you know, marquee designs. Um, you see there's some work on them to lighten them up. A lot of this is balancing as light a blade as possible with the right tension spring. Mm. So um, we haven't tried to get into completely new territory. So this is not trying to be a zero wiggle lock up like it's not trying to compete with Gavin Hawks and that's super cool and we didn't want to get in that space. Our first one, like let's not go crazy, let's do something sure. that's a standard channel type design. These are, a lot of these in the marketplace of this kind of variety of blade to handle mating, and they've been really reliable, and I said, let's just stick with that and we'll evolve our mechanism over time. So, super reliable, it's got great action and feel. I don't know if you uh, actually- I haven't even all. checked these yet, no. Fills up the space, that mats up really nice in there. That's so, like that's uh, those are the new offerings we have for 2023 right now. Thanks, bro. Good to see you, man. Yeah, likewise.